mass. What is density? I mean, what is density? Density is just mass per unit volume of any substance. Now, density is being denoted by this notation, is what we call rho. Now, it's being given as mass per unit volume. Mind you, your mass is what? Um, calculated in kilogram, while your volume is calculated in meter cube. So, so therefore, the SI unit for what? Density is kilogram per meter cube or gram per centimeter cube. Whichever one you feel you want to use, just make sure it are, the, those um, SI units are aligned. When I say aligned, if you are using kilogram, you must use meter. If you are using gram, you must use centimeter. So those are um, the analogy. Now, let's look at, if you look at the, the chart there now, different object has their different word, um, density. We have your gold. Gold's density is uh, 9.3. We look at it. Gold is 9.3 exponential 6 kilogram per meter cube. Mercury is 13.6 exponential 3. As we proceed now, you see where they will actually be used. Now let's go to another good, very good one. Um, your relative density. What is relative density? It's very easy. In mathematical formula just states that um, the relative density of substance is mathematically defined as density of substance over density of water. Meaning that relative density requires two densities for it to function. What do I mean? Two densities. One, density of that body. Do you understand? Density of the body in question, then over density of water. This is very constant. This must what take place. Density of the body over density of what? Water. So that's just relative density. Or you say mass of the body or mass of the, or an object. Mass of an object over what? Mass of equal volume of water. That's if you're looking at it in terms of mass. But if you're also looking at it in terms of weight, it could be weight of an object over weight of equal what? Volume of water. So relative densities could come in different uh, dimensions. Now let's look at this one for instance. We have relative density. Now based on the fact that on both sides, we are making use of kilogram per meter cube. Kilogram per meter cube. Relative density tends not to have any units. Are we getting it? Yes, I need to have relative density does not surface, which means that relative density is what? Unitless. Now, how do we prove this? Let's look at relative density of mercury, for instance. Relative density of, normal density of mercury is what? From our chart, 13.6 exponential 3. Excuse me, kilogram per meter cube. So if you are to look for relative density of what? Mercury now. What do you do? Density of mercury. What density of mercury? 13.6 exponential 3 kilogram per meter cube. Over density of water. From our what? Chart. Density of water is 10. Do you understand? That is 10 exponential 3. That is 1000 kilogram per meter cube. So if this cuts this, the two units cut the two units. So from there you have the relative density of mercury to be what? 13.6. No units. If you are to partake in any exam, or you must, every relative density um, value you get does not have any unit. So that is that, as we get relative density. And another name for relative density is what we call specific gravity. Note that. Please note this. You might see it in any exam. You have relative density. Another name for your relative density is what we call specific gravity. So that is another name given to relative density. Simple harmonic motion. So at this juncture, we'll be looking at okay, what um, simple harmonic motion actually means, and some other um, terms that are related to your simple harmonic motion. But first of all, we need to look at. We we'll start with the actual meaning of simple harmonic motion. Now let's start. Note a, a period motion or a periodic motion or vibration is a type of motion that occurs frequently. You understand the part of movement repeatedly. Repeated successfully with equal interval of time. What do we mean? When you say periodic motion, you can decide to have something like this. This is point A and this is point B. Now, let's say between these two points, there is um, let's say there is an object that has the ability to move from point A to point B freely. 
and comes back easily. Now, if this object goes this way and comes back, goes this way and comes back, you know, is 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 rotated between point A and point B. Now, because that object is what maintaining the same distance, she understand. So that type of what movement of that object is what we call periodic motion. Do you understand? When an object tends to what sustain the same pathway of movement, that object is said that object is said, I mean tends to be moving on periodic motion. So if you are to liken that to um, simple harmonic motion, let's now see. We are going to liken that to simple harmonic motion as we proceed. Now an important type of periodic motion is simple harmonic motion. Now let's look at this analogy. If a small body or particle vibrates or moves to and fro along a straight line under the influence of a force so that its acceleration towards a fixed point or its periodic position is proportional to the distance or displacement from that point that body is said to be have undergone simple harmonic motion let me repeat that if a small body please just follow it tends to vibrate or moves to and fro that is goes on back forward backward that's what we mean by to and fro now, along a straight line, under the influence of a force, do you understand? Now, there is a force applied here. It goes to and fro, to and fro. Do you understand? Now, that is what that statement is actually trying to analyze. To and fro, isn't it? To, under the influence of a force, so that the acceleration towards a fixed point or the equivalent position is proportional to the distance or displacement from that point. The body is said to have undergone simple harmonic motion. Now, body that is a bit simple harmonic motion, we need to look at examples of body that is a bit simple harmonic motion. And before we go into that, the motion of a body at this regards could be horizontal, it could be vertical. If it's vertical, we will be looking at um, a spring. When the body, let's say a body is being hung here, now this is mass N, and I decide to what? Toss the body downward. Now, this is the tension of the spring. If I toss it downward, you notice that there will be what? Up, upward and downward movement of these words. Uh, the upward and downward movement of this word mass that is being hung. We're going this way, but with this particular pendulum ball, it goes. So this is an horizontal movement, while this is what vertical. So whichever way they are both exhibiting simple harmonic motion. So looking at bodies that exhibit simple harmonic motion, we have what we call mass of a spring. The motion experience when the mass is turned is on on the uh, on the end of the spring, which is being attached to the wall through the other end. Do you understand? So you can see the diagram there. We have the word flaming pendulum ball. Now another one is one simple pendulum ball. The first one we analyzed, we said the mass of the spring. Mass of the spring can undergo simple harmonic motion. Another body that can undergo simple harmonic motion is a what simple pendulum ball. Now for that simple pendulum ball, some facts need to be um, I established there. You look at a simple pendulum ball. Look at this. A pendulum ball consists of a small lead weight ball. This is a small lead weight ball. Are you seeing it? Suspended from a rigid body through a thread. Now, if the space through a small angle theta, are we saying it? This is the angle of displacement. It's called angle theta. If the space through a small angle theta, now it goes to and fro as we analyzed. Now, at that junction, you will now be able to, at this place, you also have what we call the amplitude. Now, if you look at the suspension from a rigid body through a thread, this is the thread. This is the thread. Are we seeing it? Now, this is the um, rigid point where it's actually being attached. That is the wall. Are we seeing it? Now, from there, we'll be able to remain um, suspended through a thread. Now, when the force is now being used here, you know, to tilt the body, it goes through and fro in terms of, I mean, form of movement. Now, if the this if the space through a small angle theta, it exhibits a simple harmonic motion with an amplitude of what a that is the length of what displacement. Do you understand the length of displacement? That is the uh, amplitude. We now said we'll be able to obtain your period to become two pi root n over g. What does that mean? T is our period, and you have your two pi square root n over g. L is the length of the strain. G is the station due to gravity. So from there, you'll be able to obtain the total number of what? Uh, movement. When you say period, period is just the total number of counts, the total number of movement, the rope, I mean the ball mix. Do you understand? Within some 
some set points. So that will be the actual period of that pendulum ball. So their both formula is valid as long as the what displacement theta or amplitude is very small. So let's look at the third another body that undergoes in parametric motion. We have what we call a loaded test tube. A loaded test tube. When I say loaded test tube, we have we could have a body, a pot here filled with water or filled with any liquid. Now if you now have a test tube being sunk into it. Now you put some other stuff. Now ideally, this is an ideal situation because normally the, the test will be set to four and you know probably four. But if you can have it on somewhere, just I just want you to start to, to stay uh, vertically, you realize that the balancing of that test tube is not static, as in it's not balanced. So it then really tends to work, have this word vertical movement. So that is also an experience of what a simple harmonic motion so if we proceed now we are not going to be looking at some facts here you know as regards um some mathematical formulas number one the relationship between simple harmonic motion and circular motion what's the difference between simple harmonic motion and how are they related then we need to get our fact right now number one two pi radian your two pi radian must equal to what, 360 degrees what does that mean it means that for for you to complete a circle of movement it means you are moved on two pi rad so two pi rad will be equivalent to what 360 degrees are you getting it so from here now more pi radians will give you what 180 degrees so for you to move half of this circle it means you must have undergone pi rad are we getting it so you must know how to convert your radians to what degrees so this one is in radian and this one is in what degree so if you are